of the International Secret Police. Ceiling zero. Ceiling zero. Ceiling zero. Ceiling zero. When the dreaded criminal, the octopus, sends some of his band to kidnap Marsha Winfield and carry her away on a flower boat up the Siang River, Clint Barlow and Barney Dunlap fly in pursuit in the bullet monoplane they captured from the octopus. Speed Gibson stays in Hong Kong with Dr. Kingsley and little Jean, keeping in touch with his uncle by shortwave radio. The octopus interrupts their communication, however, by telling Speed that he has sent another of his planes in pursuit and that he will never see Clint and Barney again. Meanwhile, the boys have come out the victors in the dogfight in the clouds with the enemy plane, but make a forced landing because they are out of gas. Bob Gilmore, an engineer with a shortwave transmitter, rescues them, and Clint calls the doctor again, only to learn that Speed left the house to seek help. Clint, fearing that his nephew may fall into the hands of the octopus gang, is desperate. But Dr. Kingsley, didn't Speed give you any indication as to where he was going? Not a word, Clint. As a matter of fact, he was out of the house before I could stop him. What shall I do? Notify the police? No, no, I must have time to think, Doctor. Stand by your set. I'll talk to you again as soon as I have some plan laid out. Very well, Clint. I'll stand by. AKO FF signing off. That's a fine how do you do. Whatever possessed the kid to leave the doc's house? Uh, I don't know, Bonnie. What's worse, the octopus knows he's left. That's why he's tuned in on the flight radio while we were making that dead stick landing. For all we know, he may have speed in his den at this minute. Take it easy, fella. Don't get your feathers ruffled. Oh, I know, I know. It doesn't do any good, but I've got to get action. Here comes Bob Gilmore. Oh, yes. Oh, Barney, I'm going to do something with him that I never do with strangers. I'm going to take him into our confidence. I've got to, because right now he's the only man who can help us. I'd trust that guy, Clint, any day of the week. Hey, plane safely moored, Barlow. Are you coming with your short wave? Well, uh, had some bad news, Gilmore. That's so? Anything I can do? You've helped us plenty already, but maybe you can help us even more. Well, I'll sure do anything I can. Well, you see, Gilmore, Barney and I are members of the International Secret Police. Oh, I figured you weren't flying up the Siang just for fun. And you figured right, fella. Have you ever heard of the octopus? Uh, the octopus? Yeah. Why, yes. Now, we're looking for him. Want to clean up his gang. But I understand his headquarters are in Hong Kong. Yes, but he's smuggling a girl up the Siang on one of his flower boats. Along with a cargo of opium. Smuggling a girl? A white girl? Yeah, and a darn good friend of ours. Well, the whole story is too long to tell in detail, but for reasons other than purely personal, we must find that girl. Meanwhile, I'm afraid the octopus has gotten hold of my nephew in Hong Kong. You brought a boy along? Yes, he's 15 and also a member of the secret police. At that age, he must be some kid. He sure is, Bob. Keeps us hopping to stay with him. Sometimes he's overconfident. Of course, that's only natural because of his youth. And that's what worries me now. I don't know where he is, and there's only one man in Hong Kong, outside of the octopus, that might know. Li Ying? Yes, Li Ying, the tea merchant. He's a shortwave enthusiast, too. Well, see, Bob, do you mind if I use your set again? No, not at all. Speed's taken a great liking for this Li Ying, Bob. Maybe he figured he knew China better than Dr. Kingsley and could help him trace us. A-K-O-F-F, calling I-S-56. Barlow at A-K-O-F-F. Calling IS-56. Come in over 3320 kilocycles, IS-56. Barlow at AKOFF, 3320 kilocycles. Calling IS-56. Standing by. Come in, IS-56. That set you had on your plane went out on you? Yeah, all of a sudden. That's what caused this mess. When the kid didn't hear from us, he figured right off that the octopus had us, I guess. AKOFF. 
3320 killer cycles calling IS-56, Barlow at AKOFF, 3320 killer cycles calling IS-56, standing by. Come in, IS-56. Guess he's away from his set, Clint. Uh, sounds that way. I'll just have to keep sending out calls until I raise him, I guess. What on earth can he be doing? Speed, what are you doing here alone? I thought Clint told you never to leave the doctors unless someone was with you. I had to come. Something's happened to Clint. I couldn't tell you over the phone because Dr. Kingsley isn't supposed to know you're in the secret police. But what has happened to Clint? I don't know. While we were waiting for word over the doctor's short wave set, the octopus tuned in and said that the plane he sent after him had shoot him down. Well, after that, I kept trying to get Clint and Barney, but I couldn't. Gee, Lee Ying, you think that the octopus plane really got him? Has anything come over your set from Clint? I have not been here, Speed. I was out on official business, but I will go and see what I can learn right now. Come along. Where's your shortwave set, Ying? In the tea storeroom. Oh, we've been in there. Yes, you remember? Down this passage? I remember, all right. I didn't see any shortwave equipment there. Nothing but a lot of tea. That is all that anyone, excepting the secret police, should see, Speed. Ah, here we are. Oh, I almost missed the door. This passage is kind of dark. No one followed you here to your knowledge, did they? No. There was a fellow hanging around Dr. Kingsley's house. He started shadowing me, but I lost him by ducking through alleys. You took a terrible chance coming here alone, Speed. You must realize that should you fall into the hands of the octopus, Clint would give up the search for the criminal. His devotion for you stands above his duty as a member of the secret police, you know. I know, Li Ying, but I had to take a chance for his sake. Where's your shortwave equipment? Here. I take this package of jasmine tea from the shelf and press what appears to be a nail in the wall behind it. Gosh, a secret panel. Yes, those tea packages on the panel are false. The whole thing slides behind the wall. Step through, Speed. Gee, what a room. Why, well, it's a regular laboratory, Li Ying. Yes, I have everything in here that has any bearing on crime detection. There is the shortwave set there. I'll switch on the system. I have it set to receive now, Speed, so you will not have to bother with that. It's okay. Gee, if we can only hear something from Clint. Calling I.S. Fifty-six. Barlow at A.K.O.F.F. Thirty-three twenty killer cycles calling I.S. Fifty-six. Ying, it's Clint. He's safe. Standing by. Come in, I.S. Fifty-six. What was that radio band? Thirty-three twenty killer cycles. Oh, yeah. Th there, I have it now. I'll answer him. But first, I'll have to switch over. There it is. I.S. Fifty-six. Replying to A.K.O.F.F. Speed Gibson... At IS-56, replying to Clint Barlow at AKOFF. Stand by for two-way conversation. Here, I will set it for you, Speed. Thanks, Ying. Ready? Yes, go ahead. Clint. Clint, can you hear me? Uh, Speed? Yeah. Are you and Barney all right? Why the dickens did you leave Dr. Kingsley after I gave you express orders not to? I had to, Clint. While we was waiting for word from you and the plane, the octopus tuned in and said I'd never see you again. He did? Sure. That's why I beat it here. I knew Lee Ying could help me find out what had happened to you, if anybody could. Well, you've had me plenty worried. The octopus came in over our flight set, too, and threatened your safety. When we finally landed and got to a short wave set, the doctor told me you'd left without saying where you were going. I thought you'd walk right into the octopus trap. I'm sorry I scared you, Clint. Looks like the octopus was trying to frighten both of us. Where are you now? Uh, uh, what's that, Speed? You're fading on me. I said, where are you now? Oh, about 200 miles up the Siang River. I'm using the short wave equipment of a young fellow named Bob Gilmore. He has a house right on the riverbank. He's helped us out all around. Gee, that's swell. What happened in the air? We well, got into a dogfight above the clouds. Had the reserve gas tanks punctured by machine gun bullets. So Barney pulled the old head-on trick on the other plane and scared it away. Right after that, we ran out of gas and had to make a dead stick landing on the river. Gee, you are plenty lucky. Have you seen the flower boat yet? We spotted one but lost it during the dogfight. Got ahead of it in the excitement. Now we're waiting for it to catch up with us. Swell. I sure hope it's the one that's carrying Miss Marcia. I hope so. Visibility is practically zero on the river. And that boat, if it had any warning from the octopus, has had plenty of chances to get rid of its cargo. The opium and Marcia. Gee, Clint. What do you think you'll do then? It depends on what we find on the boat. If we have no luck, we'll fly back to Hong Kong. Looking for Marcia blindly up here is like looking for a needle in a haystack. But in Hong Kong, we may hear rumors of where she's being taken. But can you fly the plane now? Well, we can, as soon as the reserve gas tanks are patched up. Gilmore said he can do that as well as repair the shortwave equipment. <laughs> this 
guy's a genius, Steve. I'd like to meet him. Bring him down to Hong Kong. Yeah, uh, we'll see. Now, uh, let me talk to you. Okay. Stand by. Thank you, Steve. Hello. Barlow? Oh, yes. Yes, sir. Have you learned anything new during our absence? Not yet. I was out for quite a while seeking information, but all action seems to be concentrating on you and Barney. Oh, I see. Well, we'll go on to where we are, then. Again, will you see that Steve gets back to Dr. Kingsley safely? Oh, yes, Clint. I will send a bodyguard with him. Do not worry. Uh, and tell him to phone the doctor that he's safe. And he can also tell him that we're safe. Let me talk to him, Lei Ying. Hello, Clint. Don't you worry. I'll take care of my end of it down here. Yeah, you'll see that you do. And don't try to run Yi Ling's business, either. The main thing is to obey his orders, you understand? Yes, sir. All right, I'll keep in touch with you at the doctor's. And remember this radio band. It's A-K-O-F-F, 3320 kilocycle. I've got it. So long. Uh, so long, Speed. A-K-O-F-F, signing off. Okay, Clint. This is IS-56, signing off. IS-56, signing off. Say, Clint, that kid sure gets around, don't he? Say, so, you know, Barney, even though he was running a risk, it's lucky he went to Lee Yin's. Otherwise, I might not have reached him for hours. Ying had no idea I'd be trying to call him. Hey, Clint, that flower boat's in sight. At least I guess it's the one you're looking for. Flower boat? Let's see. You can just make it out through this window. That's her, all right. We gotta stop her. Hey, I've got some red lanterns. That'll stop it, all right. They'll think there's danger ahead. Oh, good. Let's get them. First, I think I should tell you this, Bob. Perhaps you'd better stay here. There's liable to be trouble. I like that kind of trouble, Clint. Particularly if there's a girl in danger. Well, Marsha Winfield is certainly in danger. Winfield? Did you say Marsha Winfield? Well, well, yes. Why? Why, I I know her. At least I know all about her. Her brother, Larry Winfield, was my best friend. Larry, your best friend? Then do you know he's disappeared? That the octopus is at the bottom of it? And that Marsha came over to China to see if she could find Larry? Marsha in China? Yes, and now the octopus has Marsha under his power. Hey, what's stopping us then? If Marsha Winfield's on that flower boat, we'll find her. Come on. (laughs) 